Today, more on volume using cross sections. And so very similar to yesterday's uh, uh, lesson, just a, a couple more examples here to, to really wrap your teeth around here. It says, a paperweight is constructed so that the base of the shape of the region, sorry, is the shape of the region between the x-axis and one arch the curve and uh, y equals sine 2x. So what you're seeing is sort of something that would sit down flat on the floor. The xy plane would be like the floor here, and this paperweight is the shape of this pink, uh, those pink lines there, but, but, but a 3D solid. A little tough to visualize, but it doesn't go all the way around this time. So two things are going on here. One is the x-axis isn't the center anymore, so that changed our thinking just well, just a very little bit. And also, it doesn't have a bottom half to it. This thing has to lay flat on the xy plane as if the xy plane was the floor. Um, so it's a semicircle whose diameter uh, extends from the x-axis to the curve. So if I, let me just draw that on there so you can see what we're talking about. There's a standard diameter, a diameter of this thing right across there. And that's on the flat plane of the uh, bottom of this paperweight that's going to sit on the desk. So it says use a calculator, turn the volume. All that means is when the time comes to take the integral, we can use our calculator. Well, the big thing I want you to get from this is that the diameter of this, of each of these circles is two sine x. So we gotta do a little thinking there and go, okay, well, that means the radius at any value is half of that, so it's just sine of x uh, when, we, when we do that there. Um, now, next. Um, we want to do uh, these little cross sections. So we want to use our, our cross section formula, which is volume A to B of the area of each of these cross sections times a dx. But the area of each of these cross sections is only a half circle. So we've got pi times the radius at that value squared, but then divide by two. I'm a big common factor person. So I like pulling that common factor out front. So we get a pi over two out front and then integral a to b. Well, the radius at each time is sine, so I'm getting sine squared x dx. Now, you can do this using a trig uh, identity. You'd have to use, say, cos 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Isolate sine squared x and put that in. You know, and it's not that bad of an integral, really, compared to what we've been doing, but this particular one asks us to use the calculator. So again, let me just walk through in words the steps there. Um, you gotta be in math mode. Um, and then you hit your integral button, and in this case, I'm uh, sine squared x, so I'm going sine of x. I'm going to put that all in a bracket and hit squared, and that's from a zero. Whoops, I didn't get the uh, limits of integration on there. I was talking away, so it's in, in, you can see it on the screen there. It's from zero to pi, so I need from zero to pi. And when I press enter on that, I get pi over 2. Which, if you wanted to get as a decimal, about 1.57 uh, units cubed. And that's all. So there really is not... Um, uh, It's not that difficult a situation. Um, Sorry, I missed a pi over 2 in there. That, that's a pi over 2, and that's a pi over 2. So I, I missed this pi over 2 here, that uh, out front there. I, I knew something was wrong. So pi over 2 times pi over 2. Um, so I'm going to square that answer, and so I get 2.47. I mean, as an exact answer, you could go pi squared over 4. So I dropped that out so that that integral was pi over 2 when I pumped it into the calculator, and then I still had the pi over 2 up front. Okay. Um, last thing today is something called uh, Cavallari's Volume Theorem. And Cavallari's Volume Theorem states that the solids with the same height and identical cross-section areas at any given height have the same volume. This property should seem correct after considering the way we've been using cross-section. So um, if you've got a... Uh, 
a shape that isn't going straight up and down like that first cone is, is sort of going off to the side like that. As long as it has the same height and will give you the same cross sections all the way along the way, then it'll have the same volume. And that, that makes sense with, with, with what we've been doing here. And that comes up in the odd example that is very odd looking like this one or this one. You can just consider it to be this shape or this shape. You don't have to worry about the fact that it's off angle like that. So use that when you're, when you get sort of weird shapes there. Okay. Um, tough lesson tomorrow. Make sure you knock this stuff down. So, uh, because this is the last of the quote, easy stuff. And then things get a little wild as far as visualizations tomorrow. So, uh, have a great day.